What's going on guys, it's Lowfloored and welcome back to another SCUM video. Today I'll be showing you guys how to level up all of your skills and how they work. Many people don't realize the amount of depth that goes into your character, and there are a lot of different builds to fit your playstyle. And there was a lot of research that's gone into this video guys, so if you do find this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any other tips, updates, or gameplay videos. I really appreciate all of your support. But before we go into each skill, let's talk about what each attribute has to offer. Here we have a thin prisoner with no points added to their skills. If we take a look at the metabolism screen, we can see a lot of information regarding our character's skills, body performance, and skill modifiers. Now when playing in real time, you may not notice these things, but they are important to understand your character and why certain things are happening. So for this thin prisoner, you can see that his melee damage bonus is at 80% and his gear weight is at 2 out of 30 kilograms. If we compare this to a muscular prisoner, you will see the melee damage bonus is now 120% and his gear weight is 2 out of 60 kilograms. Why is this? Well, this is because our muscular prisoner has 5 attribute points in strength, while the thin prisoner has 1 attribute point in strength. So as a result, the muscular prisoner can punch harder and carry more gear than the thin prisoner, which makes sense. But if we add some skill points into boxing, you will then see that melee damage will be boosted depending on how many points you put into that skill. And as you can see, the Muscular Prisoner with Max Boxing now has an increased melee damage bonus of 162%, doubled of the Thin Prisoner with no skill in boxing. That's why you can knock out someone more often with Advanced Boxing. But that's not all you get with upgrading your boxing. When you have at least basic skill into boxing, you will be able to perform combos if you hit puppets or players twice consecutively. And if you have a higher skill, your punches and kicks will be much faster and harder. But if you have no skill, your punches will be weaker and you will not be able to perform a combo. Now this sounds great and all, but how do we level it up? Well, it's really simple. You can level up your skill by kickboxing players, puppets, or even a wall or tree. Next up we have rifles. To level up your rifles, you simply have to shoot puppets, animals, or players. The higher the skill you have in rifles, the less recoil you will have when firing. You will also have less weapon sway when aiming down sights. I'm going to show the recoil patterns on four different characters with the same attributes except skill points into rifles. These shots were performed with a controller so it wouldn't affect my recoil. And as you can see, the difference is night and day with no skill versus advanced skill. With advanced skill, most of the shots hit on point while no skill did not. But having advanced skill doesn't mean everything with recoil. Comparing a 3 strength character with a 5 strength character with both having basic skill shows quite a difference in recoil, even though they have the same skill level. Having a higher skill in rifles also has an effect on how fast you reload. Keep in mind my timing and editing could be slightly off, but you can still see the difference between each level and having a higher skill can save you when you and your opponent are reloading at the same time. It's even more noticeable with the new crossbow. Check out the time difference between these prisoners. Pretty crazy stuff, right? You can level up melee weapons the exact way you would level up your kickboxing. The only difference is that you will get a smaller bonus in melee damage, but same rules apply. No skill will not allow you to perform a combo while basic and above will allow it, while increasing speed in each swing. Also with higher strength you will slightly swing certain melee weapons faster. Next up are handguns, and these behave like the rifle skills. You level up by shooting puppets, players, or animals. But I had some weird findings when I was researching the recoil. 
but I believe this is because of the rapid fire I was doing. Once we slow down the shots, you can see an increase in accuracy. But the difference in reload times doesn't make it worth putting points into handguns from the get-go. Leveling up archery is exactly the same as handguns and rifles, but the difference here is how strong you have to be to use certain bows and the drawing time. This is a thin character with a level 1 strength and no skill in archery, and as you can see he is too weak to even draw the bow, and for the recurve bow he can barely manage it. So this weakling will need to settle for a 20 pound improvised bow. Now here we have a 5 strength prisoner with basic skills in archery, a 3 strength prisoner with advanced archery, and a 3 strength prisoner with no skill. And as you can see the prisoner with basic skill can draw his bow at pretty much the same time as the prisoner with advanced skill, while the prisoner with no skill is having trouble drawing his bow at all. This is because of the strength differences between them. But don't worry, all of you weaklings can reduce the amount of weight of your bow by using a toolbox. To level up running, all you need to do, well, is run. The more you run, the more you upgrade your skill. And to level up endurance, you need to be overweight and moving. The longer you run overweight, the more you're going to level up your skill. Here we have four prisoners, all with the same exact stacks except for their running skill. I thought the gap between no skill would be bigger, but a second could go a long way. Now let's go back to our thin and muscular prisoners and introduce the fat prisoner to show off what constitution can do for your character. This thin prisoner has a constitution of 5 points, which gives this prisoner 120 HP, a walk speed of 6.9 km an hour, a jog speed of 13.7 km an hour, and a run speed of 24.9 km an hour. While the muscular prisoner has a 6.3 km an hour walking speed, a 12.5 km an hour jogging speed, a 22.7 km an hour running speed, and 120 HP, both of which have a constitution of 5. But since the other prisoner is thin, he will be able to move a bit quicker. But if we take a look at a fat prisoner with a constitution of 1, you will see that his HP has dropped by 40 points and his walk speed is 6.7 km an hour, his jog speed is 13.4 km an hour, and his run speed is 24.4 km an hour, which is faster than a muscular prisoner, which is pretty odd. But if we add some skill points into running and endurance for the thin prisoner, you will see that his jog and running speed have increased to 15.8 km an hour from 13.7, and his run speed to 28.7 from 24.9. You will also see the stamina recovery increase to 113% from 90%. Now let's test out two different prisoners that have the same max running speed and medium endurance. The skinny prisoner wins by almost a whole second, but let's see how this race turns out when they're both carrying the same amount of weight. And surprisingly both prisoners managed to get to the end of the race at the same time. You'd think the skinnier one wouldn't be able to keep up, but I guess we've been proven wrong. Now before I used to think that endurance was how long you can run for, but it turns out that's not the case. It's actually how long it takes for your character to regain their stamina back, which was pretty mind blowing to me. I even tested if weight would change anything with endurance, but it does not. So because of that, 
I tested to see if strength comes into play here. And here we have a prisoner with a strength of one and a prisoner with a strength of three. And it turns out with a higher strength, you will be able to run for a little bit longer than someone that is weaker than you when carrying a lot of weight. To level up your thievery skill, all you have to do is pick any lock, whether it be someone's base, the lockers in a police station, or even using a practice lock. And with each level of thievery offers half a second more than its previous level. To level up your driving skill, all you need to do is simply drive a vehicle. The higher the skill you have, the faster you will be able to accelerate as well as having better control over your vehicle. When having a lower skill, your car will experience stutters and your speed will be capped to a certain speed depending on your skill. Just look at the difference between having no skill and advanced skill in driving. This can be really crucial if you're trying to get out of a bad situation. To level up your demolition skill, you can craft different types of bombs, or you can defuse bombs, including the practice bomb. Also, having advanced demolition allows you to have a whole second more to defuse a bomb. And with a higher demolition skill, you will be able to craft more bombs for your base, which is great when you want to make sure your base is as secure as possible. And to level up throwing, all you need to do is throw any item at any living thing. For me, it was using a dildo spear. I also try to see if accuracy or throw speed is increased, but for my testing, it all looks about the same to me. <coughs> to level up stealth, all you need to do is crouch and walk, and you will slowly level up your stealth skill. Stealth skill is really important because it allows your character to be more quiet to other players as well as puppets and mechs. Check the differences in loudness with these prisoners. And like I said earlier, having a higher skill in stealth will allow you to be more quiet when running around mech areas. <laughs> to level up your awareness, you can do a couple of things. Pretty much anytime you walk around and you see loot, you're leveling up your awareness skill. But to speed this process up, you can chop up puppets, players, or animals, and you will see a blue glow showing that you've seen something, which levels up your skill. And when you're in focus mode, it will allow you to see loot from farther away. Take a look at the differences between each level. Awareness also allows you to drown ambient noise out, so you can hear any footsteps or shots more clearly. But be careful because using your focus mode does drain your stamina.
To level up your sniping skill, you must use a scope and shoot a player, puppets, or animals. If you do not have a scope on a sniper, it will level up your rifle skills instead. The sniping skill allows you to gain more information on how far something is, where the wind is blowing, and more. But with a higher skill, you will be able to gain that information faster, and the distance you can zero will be farther as well. To level up your camouflage skill, all you have to do is go to any bush and crouch or prone. Depending on your character's camouflage skill, you will be able to de-render off screen when hiding in bushes. This helps when you're 500 kilometers out and the vegetation has de-rendered, so you can still hide in a bush safely. But be careful, because if a person has a high awareness, they will be able to spot you much easier. Unfortunately, camouflage is a bit bugged right now, so I will be doing a follow-up video going more in depth when it is fixed. But the rundown here is that the prisoner can't see the two other players because his awareness is low, and the two other players are safely hidden in a bush. He can only see them once they have moved. To level up your survival skill, you can craft different items or cut trees or anything that has to do with crafting. Cutting a shirt or even crafting rope will level up your survival skill. The higher the survival skill you have, the faster you can do those tasks. Also, basic skill and above provides you with a compass. The higher the survival skill, the more information you get on your compass and the more items you will be able to craft. To level up your engineering skill, you can craft ammo or build anything that is a blueprint. The higher the engineering skill you have, the less items it takes to build something as well as having a heap of more items to craft, which is necessary to a person that wants to build a very secure base. I mean, just look at how many more items you could craft with advanced engineering. But that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. I hope you did find this video helpful. And if you made it all the way through, I'd like to say thank you so much and you're awesome. But that's it for me, guys. If you do want more videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Thanks again, guys. I'm Lowfloored, and stay toasty out there.